Yeah, hello, students. Uh, in continuation to our vector introductions and uh, pieces, we move to the last aspect, which is the vector product. About vector product uh, in sequence, we said there are two multiplicative products. On that vector, we have the scalar, which measure magnitude only, and the vector, which shows what the magnitude and the direction. So a quick one and a short, short one, as usual. We are going to consider two vectors, which we want to multiply in, in products. We take the first uh, vector, we take it as A vector, and we take the second vector, we take it as B vector. So if this vector are to be multiplied together in vector form, which you call vector product. Like I said, remember, I said vector product is also called the cross product. Cross product. Cross product. Let's keep that at the back of your mind. The cross product. So cross product is also called the vector product. So about that uh, cross product. Now, if you are to multiply these two vector products together, so we take the third vector, which is, uh, let's say, C is the product of A and B. So we say C vector is now equals to A vector cross, that is multiplied by B vector. So students should be careful about the differences between the dots and the cross product. So when you are doing cross product, you are actually telling us that the vector is having both magnitude and it's having the direction. So that's that. And when you want to talk about direction on that vector analysis, all we are saying is that uh, we are saying that we are talking about the angle in which uh, the vector is making. So about that, the quick one, when we want to write that, we can write it in mathematical form, which I've explained, magnitude and direction, whatever, whatever. So, and when we talk about the angle between the two vectors, we say C vector is now equals to A, B, sine theta. You remember? When we did the dot product, it is what? A, B, cos theta. And I told you, cos of zero, cos of 90 is zero. But in this case, if you watch, sine of 90 is not zero. And that is what will lead us to what? The nice thing, to get the direction of what? Of the vector product. Now, to understand the direction concept, I'll be quick because it's going to be a lengthy video, but we just have to keep it simple and short. As usual, now note, note this point, for understanding's sake, you have to take a note. Yeah, fine. Now, to calculate or to find, let's just try to find the direction of vector products. To find the direction of vector products, we use the right hand thumb rule. I write that right hand thumb rule. Please permit me to use abbreviation, my guest student. It's very, very important. So the direction of what? of uh, the vector product is always calculated using the right hand thumb rule, which I write as a RHTS. So we say if we have two vectors, one vector, second vector, acting at an angle of theta to each other, let's say this is A vector, this is B vector, the angle between the vector is theta. So if we want to get the direction, you know, the direction from here to here, which is what I'm trying to show from that simple diagram, can be calculated using the right hand thumb rule. So always keep that at the back of your mind that cross product is different from what? Uh, your scalar product, which is dot product. Now, the only major difference there is just the angle acting between them. In that one, the angle between that is zero. We always keep that here, it's cross theta. The angle between the vector here is sine theta. I hope you are following. And to do that, let's just talk about the last aspect under this slide, which I call the cross product of a unit vector cross product of a unit vector. Now, and for unit vector, we've talked about that vector divided by its own magnitude is called unit vector. So we consider whenever you multiply two unit vector, A cap multiplied by A cap is always going to what? Give you what? Zero. Because we are talking about cross product. Remember, A multiplied by A in the other one is A squared. Because the angle between them is what? Cos theta. But in this case, A times A is zero. And because of that, we always tell students that when you have I cap multiplied by I cap, it's going to give you zero. The same thing is applicable for J cap multiplied by J cap, it's going to give you zero. And uh, last but not the least, K cap multiplied by K cap is always also going to give you 
zero. So that's just a notable difference we can talk about between scalar product and vector product. In the other one, this is always going to give you units. But in this case, it's going to give you zero. So you need to be careful when you are multiplying. And talking about the major thing of today, which is understanding how to multiply the cross product. Let's just make something unique and uh, not as every other way you have been seeing it. Plus, let's take the xy plane in our own unique way. Let's take the x plane, the x plane. I also have following. Let's take the y plane. And the last plane, which we call, we call, let's take the z plane or the z plane as usual. So we have these three planes, as you can see here, my dear student. We can liberate them for understanding sake. X, which is I, you guys know it very well. I cap, then Y, which is what? J cap, and C, which is a K cap. So now, the logic we use here is very simple. We just put I, J, K. Now, we talk about the movement. Now, always keep it at the back of your mind. Whenever you have I, Cap multiplying J cap, you are going to have K cap. Please note that. Then when you have J multiply, it's just like I'm moving like this. Let me do it in terms of uh, a circular motion. I have I, for understanding sake, I have J. Let's just revolve. Let's revolve this. And I have uh, the third one. I'm not going to scale my dear students, and it's moving in that format. So we are moving like this. So it's always very easy to move to understand. I multiply by I here, multiply by J is going to give me K. Then J multiply by K, you know, we are talking about unit vector, we put it uh, in that format. It's going to give me I cap, and the last one, K multiplied by I. Both are in cap, it's going to give me, it's going to give me J. So, guys, always use this simple circular stuff as if you are going clockwise. Loop. So we use the right hand term loop clockwise loop. And that is the way I come about this. You can see I here multiply J, we're gonna have K. J multiply K, we're gonna have I. Then I multiply J like that. K multiply I, we're gonna have K. So we are going like that. But also have it at the back of your mind that if J is multiplying I. Is going to give you negative. So if this otherwise, you can note, you can take a note down. Importantly, note if the multiplication is reverse, if the multiplication is reverse, the value is going to be. negative so please keep that at the back of your mind because we cannot continue talking about formula and coming of formula it's just understanding the concept now you can place your right hand that's like using the right hand term blue place your right hand on i this is i and let it what let the term face the j you can see the rest of your finger if you can try and do that i would have loved to show that in what in video maybe i should try, should try and do that one in my next video for you to see the way the position of the hand so if you place your eye right hand on top of i and your what and your thumb on j you are going to see the rest of the finger is going to be on what on k it's just like that you are multiplying i times k so we call the right hand thumb rule so it's just like this it's very simple to position your hand like this you are looking at the rest of your finger so that's the way we do it so and guys it's very easy to know we are going to be doing some example in the next section see you guys soon and you have a wonderful time bye for now